Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV Dead. Sorry about that, I didn't need the toilet. We were having technical issues. Uh, but we are here, we are slightly late. I'm really sorry about that. YouTube messed up, it wasn't us, I promise you. Um, it definitely wasn't. We've got loads of news stories for you for you today. I'm looking forward to this one. Um, so thank you all for joining me uh, on this wonderful Tuesday afternoon. The afternoon where Liverpool sit two points clear uh, of Arsenal and three points clear of Manchester City in the race for the Premier League title 23 24 oh it promises to be such a good end to the season doesn't it i cannot wait to see what happens starting with sheffield united and then the big one at uh, manchester united the way where we owe them one big time for what happened in the cup and if you want to join us the entire way uh, then you can do please indulge me let me talk to you about redmenplus.com because we've got an incredible offer for you we're doing 50 percent off a yearly captain subscription we're never late to streams on redmenplus.com uh, because it's our own thing we, youtube never messes us up it's our own thing uh, we release all of our shows as podcasts and videos uh, well, 98% of our shows is podcast. Sometimes the deep dive doesn't work. Um, yeah, if you go over to redmenplus.com, uh, you can see here, if you sign up, you just click yearly, uh, and then you subscribe to the Captain Yearly segment here. That'll then take you through to your payment screen. You add a promotion code, and it's quite simply RACE, R-A-C-E. You apply it there. It then drops your price down to $34.99 for a full year. Year of Red Men Plus goodness. That will get you all the documentaries that we produce, all the past documentaries that you produce. It'll get you all the content around the running and the race for Liverpool's 20th Premier League title. It'll give you everything uh, on the run for Europa League this season as well. It'll get you all of the new manager chat as well, of which there will be plenty in today's show, but also later on today, because I'm back with Josh Williams for a deep dive at 3 o'clock-ish. No, 3.40-ish normally for the deep dive, I think. Uh, we're taking a deep dive into Ruben Amarim. Uh, we're going to give you everything you need to know about him uh, later on this afternoon on YouTube. Then the Red Men Plus show, which we always do a second deep dive as well, for those who don't know, uh, on redmenplus.com every single week is going to be a tactical breakdown of Ruben Amarim and how he will fit in as a potential Liverpool manager. So, yeah, the code is RACE, R-A-C-E. It'll get you it for $34.99 for a year, which is around about £2.42.5 pence a month, something like that. Uh, that was fast math. It, it may be way off. Do not count me. Can we put a little star there and an asterisk? Who knows? Uh, but we're going to start off with the first story, and that is that Ruben Amarim is interested in becoming the next full-time manager of the greatest football club in the world, Liverpool Football Club. Um, Ruben Amarin would accept Liverpool offer this week, right? This is Anfield. Uh, with the sporting manager Ruben Amarin now positioned as the number one candidate to take over at Liverpool, reports in Portugal suggest he's prepared to join. The situation is now progressing swiftly according to reports in Portugal, with the 39-year-old unlikely to resist offers from Merseyside. Correa de, Pan de Mana explained that he will only decide his future when the season ends, though he is aware of the interest from Liverpool. We know that Ruben Amrin is currently sitting top of the Primera uh, League. Uh, Liga. Sorry, uh, They are one point clear of Benfica. They've got a double header against them. They hold a 2-1 league in the domestic cup over in Portugal, heading into the second leg. That's Tuesday, 10 I think, uh, and then they play Benfica in the league on Saturday. They're a point ahead of Benfica. Ruben Amarim wants to lead them to another, his second Premier League title in the last few years. We know he's had a, a stellar start to his career. We know why Liverpool are interested in him, but if you want to know more, if you want that deep dive, three o'clock on Redmen Plus, about 3.40ish, there or thereabouts, uh, over on YouTube for the deep dive into him. Sources close to Amrim have cited three key factors in his willingness to join beyond beyond the club's elite level status. They are the passion of the fans, the club's investment in training and promoting youth, and the desire for attacking football, which is great. I mean, we've got the passion of the fans, haven't we? Uh, we do uh, invest in our youth. He'll probably be looking at Liverpool right now in the Yang Club and thinking, my word, they won a cup with kids like we were, to be honest with you. How the hell did we do that? I've got no idea. But these kids are players, each and every one of them at the moment. 
we are with the right man in charge i think uh, on course to challenge for the next few years with the crop of players that we've got but that new manager hunt is obviously essential to everything we do uh, and ruben amarin could be the guy uh, obviously he's got a background from jose marino we know he played for portugal as well uh, i think he made a world cup squad actually one time as well uh, i think he retired at 32 he's in management with braga at 34 and uh, won a cup in his first season there um, I think he only had like three months in charge of Braga. He won like ten games. Um, and only drew one in the league. I think he lost his two. The two games he lost was actually to Rangers in the Europa League. I think it was it was at last sixteen, something like that, maybe. Um, obviously, Amarim Sporting put Arsenal out did the last season in the Europa League uh, after a couple of draws and stuff. So he's got a little bit of pedigree over there in Europe as well. Uh, he's doing well at the moment, uh, and obviously he's a fantastically looking bloke, uh, which is always good to see. So I'm just getting a call in here, uh, screen that bad boy, catch up with them later. Thank you very much, David. Much appreciated. Uh, speak to you in a bit. It's on my watch as well. Going to have to turn that off as well. Going to get into some of the comments. Then we've got a super chat here. Uh, Who's that from? Oh, David Brett Smith. Let's have a little go of that. Uh, with the way Ruben plays, who do you think it could benefit most in our team? Um, David, that will be answered on the deep dive later on today. Uh, but um, to give you an answer, it's an interesting one. That's a very tough question, actually. I think in terms of where we are this season, it might be someone like an Andy Robertson because he'll be able to get back to his best. But with the age of him uh, and stuff like that, it's probably not the sexy answer. But I think the big benefit in, in what we've been asking our left back to do this season and what Amarim's wing backs do uh, could really, really benefit him. I also think Mo Salah might get in front of goal a little bit more uh, in the tactical setup uh, of Ruben Amarim because he plays more in the half space and more in front of the goal uh, than out on the wing and stuff. And actually, we saw a little bit of that uh, uh, the weekend just gone where obviously Salah had 12 shots and I think he played slightly more uh, inside instead of outside. So, yeah, that, that hopefully that answers your question, mate. Um, Tony Horse says, I trust uh, Edwards to appoint the right candidate, whoever that might be. Uh, absolutely. Uh, if it's Amarin and he plays three centre backs, could Diaz be left wing back really attacking that though? Oh, it would be. Absolutely would be. Um, it's interesting. He's definitely got the legs to do it. I mean, it's a very, very tough position to play in football, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, OK, we'll move on then. Uh, Liverpool's owners, FSG, close on new appointment. So there we go. Uh, Liverpool owners, Fenway Sports Group, are close to appointing Benfica Technical Director Pedro Marquez as part of the new look football operation. FSG have targeted Marquez as a key tenant in their planned multi-club restructure under their head of football operations, Michael Edwards. When the, with, while the final job title is to be determined, the Portuguese is expected to take on responsibilities for player development and pathways similar to those of the part in Liverpool elite development coach Vitor Matos. Now, this is a very much an FSG appointment. This would not be a Liverpool football club appointment. It would be outside of that, but obviously you play a pathways or that type of stuff with the multi-club restructure, a potential uh, and much talked about club in Portugal, interestingly. Maybe as a gateway to South American players coming to Liverpool, it would f still fall within his remit to think, right, well, how do I get them from there through Portugal into Europe and straight into Liverpool's first team in a year or two's time? And that is what we'll be looking at from him, I think. Uh, there was also talk um, of... Jason Wilcox, which I think we should move on to now. Um, Liverpool, were, it was reported a, a few days ago, were interested in the Southampton technical director, Jason Wilcox. Those of you who remember the 90s, it was an all silly shaped Easter egg boxes. Uh, it was a lot of Blackburn Rovers under Kenny Dalglish as well. Um, obviously, we remember uh, Tim Flowers in goal, Colin Hendry at the back, uh, Tim Sherwood in centre midfield, uh, Graham Lasso playing left back for them. I remember a lot of Jason Wilcox on that left hand side. On the other the side Stuart Ripley and SAS the original SAS Sutton and Shearer firing to a, them to a league title um, 
Uh, yeah, so and, and, and Wilcox was a player that I really liked. Actually, he played for them for around about ten years or something. I think he was brought through the youth system and all that type of stuff. He is now going to be going. It looks like to Manchester United. He stepped down as the director of football of Southampton. Rumours were that Liverpool were interested in Liverpool were not interested in him. Liverpool were interested in Marquez, and it looks like they're going to get their man there as well. So Manchester United, you may have got, got one over on us in the cup. You didn't get one over on us with left winger Jason Wilcox, um, and uh, and now unemployed Jason Wilcox as part of your restructure and we're going to get one over you on Sunday as well so suck balls uh, Manchester United um, let's call it a random one would you take Nori uh, or Estupinen as a new left back uh, I like Estupinen I, I really do I think he's a really good player um, yeah yeah, I like them both actually to be honest with you and, and again I think if um if we were looking at maybe sort of a, a, a Ruben Amarin, then maybe there's a player like that, uh, a little bit more space for them to be a little bit more expressive and on the front foot and stuff like that. Uh, Dan Osa Stewart, Ripley, bloody great player. He really was, man. I, I really liked that side. I, I really did. Um, lots of shouts for the old players. Uh, yeah, it's nice to re remember a side from the, from the 90s and stuff, isn't it? And yet when I think of Tim Flowers, I loved him as a goalkeeper, but I think of that goal that just sort of rolled along the floor and then inexplicably uh, bounced over his head and if you're not thinking of Tim Flowers in that goal then you're doing something wrong you're doing life wrong definitely um um, proper LFC says we need Thiago Motta from Bologna a lot of people starting to talk about Thiago Motta uh, from Bologna obviously there's another um, much well a, a fella that's not really talked about too much and that's Simone Inzaghi maybe because he was the shit brother Filippo Inzaghi was a much better striker and had a much better career but Simone Inzaghi looks like a better manager doesn't he and he's doing good things over at Inter Milan but then people at Liverpool don't and, and people in England don't seem to respect Italian footy anymore which is a little bit mad considering he got that Inter Milan side to a final last season in the in the Champions League and stuff and it was only beaten by the best side in world football at the time and that's Manchester City but that was at the time this is now this is our season the a league title to be won. Liverpool Football Club are in the race and we're going to be going for it between now and the end of the season big time and you know it and I know it and everybody around Liverpool Football Club knows it. Oh, yes. What a time to be a Red. Pity it's all going to end when you're going to lose, eh? But it might not. You never know. Um, we'll move on to the next story. Sorry about that. Uh, hopefully I, I G'd a few people up and then I brought you crashing back down to earth. Um, talking about crashing back down to earth, here's a story that's got no legs whatsoever. Uh, Liverpool are interested, apparently, uh, in Dean Huyssen from Juventus, the 18-year-old centre-half, uh, La Gazzetta dello Sport, claiming the Reds are preparing a real offensive to lure the youngster. He was valued at around €30 million Euros by the old lady of Turin. In. Uh, today, the renowned Italian source have pro provided an update on the story and revealed that Liverpool will submit an offer at worth £25.6 million to secure Huyssen. The 18-year-old is currently on loan with Roma, has made 13 appearances say yeah, for the Gelle Rossi, if that's how you say that. The Milan-based news outlet have mentioned that Roma have made inquiries about renewing the loan, but Liverpool are going to try and tempt them with an offer of £25.6 million uh, with Leipzig, Newcastle United, United and Borussia Dortmund's also going to try their luck with similar proposals. Now, a quick look uh, at Dean Huyssen. He looks very, very young, is the first thing that springs to mind here. You can see there, I mean, I can't grow a beard, but I'm 41. This I like, can't grow a beard because he's not gone through puberty yet. There's a difference. Um, one is down to me, da. Yours is age. Uh, anyway, he's 1.97 metres, and if you are wondering, that is six for four and a half maybe edge it over 6.46 6 maybe who knows uh, I did check it before on Google but I'm not 100% sure now um, he's both footed he plays both sides of the centre back he would absolutely fit Liverpool but Liverpool don't have a manager and therefore Liverpool aren't going to be signing any players or linked to any players properly until we've got a manager in place why is that you ask well it's blindingly obvious to everybody every Liverpool fan if you gave a little modicum of thought to it would understand that a new manager is going to come in he may not have the final say on who um, Liverpool are to sign because of the way that the structure of the football club is getting changed well, now that Jürgen Klopp is going to be leaving but I think everybody as I say with a modicum of a brain cell would probably be able to look at it and go the manager going to come in and go I played this formation 
therefore I need this player because we don't have them. Um, for example, Amarin plays three at the back. We don't really have three centre-halves. Well, we do. We've got Kwanzaa, we've got Canati, and we've got Virgil van Dijk, but that is literally it. Matip's contract is uh, over at the end of the year. This one might make sense in that regard, but might you want someone who favours his left foot? So who knows? I, I don't know exactly. Um, we're going to be talking about an attacker midfielder later. Well, if you play um, a two-man midfield, are you going to need an attacker midfielder? Because we've got loads and loads of midfielders already. So I think it is pointless talking about these transfers I really do but they're in the news and everybody likes us to talk about them so I'm going to talk about them Dean Donny Huyson uh, for 25.6 million it's not going to happen before a manager comes in uh, we may have an interest a long standing interest in him of course uh, and the players uh, uh, sorry the people in charge of transfers at the Liverpool Football Club will probably be looking around going these are the guys that we need to have lined up in case the manager comes in and says I want to centre off that makes perfect sense but don't expect a bid from Liverpool Football Club A the transfer window is not open and B we don't have a manager in charge Anyway, I'm sure that one's going to come through. Uh, so thank you very much, Paisley Gates. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, David Ornstein next, and he shared a big update around Roberto De Zerbi, who was seen handing his CV in, in person uh, at Anfield on Sunday in a 2-1 loss from Brighton. Obviously, he's given us troubles um, over the weekend. Somebody asking there, let me see your T-shirt. Hang on, King Jason. Sorry, sorry, Aaron. I went off. I went off. It's, uh, it's uh, Watoro Endo, or Super Watoro. It's a belter. I absolutely love it. As a big Nintendo fan, the fact that I was playing Tears of the Kingdom late last night, I refused to finish that game. I just want to go around and get all the shrines done before I do, and I reckon I've got about 15 shrines. I think there's 152. I'm there and thereabouts. The shrine hunt, shrine hunt I should say, is ongoing, and at this point, fucking long, uh, because I refuse to use cheat maps. Um, but yeah, you can get that from redmanmerch.com. It's Watoro Endo. He is Super Watoro. We love him to bits. Thank you very much, Ellie McDowell, who says, I love your sh shirt, Chris. Um, yeah, anyway, back to Roberto De Zerbi. Uh, much appreciated for the uh, indulgence once again. Liverpool's new manager search is finally getting down to the nitty gritty. Uh, Zabi Lonza have removed himself as a candidate. There's still a handful of candidates, yada, yada, yada. Um, there's... Another name who's never been too far away from the rumours has been Brighton boss De Zerbi. The Italian is back to do a great job at Anfield and seemingly high on Liverpool shortlist. However, an update from journalist David Ornstein has suggested that De Zerbi may no longer be an option for the Reds. This is one of the most reliable journalists around Liverpool Football Club, so I'll get to it. De Zerbi, um, speaking about De Zerbi, Ornstein says, Liverpool got the chance to see De Zerbi close up on Sunday. Yada, yada, yada. Audition, audition, audition. My information is that it's incredibly unlikely that they go for De Zerbi, says the journalist. I'm being told that that's not going to happen. Pretty cast iron, that from David Ornstein. Early doors in the manager race as well. I mean, Zabi Alonso's only just moved him there and then there's loads and loads of clicks that could be had from De Zerbi. No, not going to happen. My information, Liverpool not interested in the Zerbi. Um, Dan Club and Chloe Bloxham made up with that one, as is Aaron, um, who, who don't feel too confident about him. Let me know if you thought the Zerbi would have been a good fit for Liverpool. Could you put your finger on why you didn't like the Zerbi as the next Liverpool manager? He seems to be doing a good job at Brighton. I say seems he's doing a good job at Brighton. I'll be a little bit more on, the, on point with that one. Um, he's also saying Amarim is definitely in the mix uh, his body of work at Sporting Lisbon is really impressive I also think a member of his backroom staff on strength and condition used to work at Liverpool said to be really important to Amarim at Sporting I think conversations have already taken place oh hello Hello. Uh, include, uh, not somebody else is Thiago Motta as well that Ornstein mentions Liverpool could be interested in. Um, M is saying Thiago Motta did not extend his contract with Bologna. His contract ends in July 2024. Very interesting. Smooth operator. Says, I would prefer Amarim. Uh, which is great. And Josh Worthing says, I am highly interested in Amarim. Um, love the fish pump as well, mate straight back at you buddy um, next news story then oh before we do that who says Costas ah who says Costas is your top candidate Chris right now it's Ruben Amrim I said on last week's deep dive I thought he was a better tactical fit for this Liverpool squad of players uh, than Zabi Alonso now I also um, added an addendum there to say 
it's no guarantee that Alonso would have come to Liverpool and played the same tactics because I think a good manager will look at the squad of players and go, right, we're not playing three at the back, we're playing four at the back because we've got loads of full-backs like Costas, like uh, Andy Robertson, etc., etc. Equally on the other side, you've got Trent Alexander-Arnold, uh, you've got Conor Bradley, etc., etc. But if you were to just take a plug-and-play method of tactics, I thought Amarim was a better fit. I thought psychologically, um, Alonso would have fit better with the Liverpool fans. I think Alonso is proving um, right now that he is a, an elite manager uh, and I think that might have been a better option for us, but that has been moved off the table. I am gutted, of course I'm gutted, just like anybody else, but if you know me, I get excited about things and right now I'm excited about Ruben Amarim potentially being Liverpool manager. And I, I, I look forward to hearing some of the other names. Like, I've not really done too much research, I'll be honest, on Thiago Mata. I know quite a lot about Simone Inzaghi. I know a lot about Hansi Flick, for example. Names that have also been mentioned. I know a lot about Julian Nagelsmann. I hate Thomas Tuchel. Um, so, but he's a good manager, clearly. Uh, maybe just not the elite manager that we need. And maybe people will sit there and say, well, actually, is Amber in the elite manager that we need? And, you know, was Jürgen Klopp an elite, elite, elite manager? Um, he'd won a couple of elite titles, got to a Champions League final, of course. But that he proved over a period of time that he could garner this many trophies? No, obviously. Uh, Amarin's won a couple of trophies as well. He's broken a 19-year duck for... Sporting probably hasn't got as good a CV as uh, Jürgen Klopp did uh, when he left Borussia Dortmund, but you've got to be at a big club to find out whether you're going to work at a big club. Um, so, yeah. <sighs> Charlie Lloyd agreeing with me about something. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, yeah, agree. Klopp originally played a 4-2-3 one at Dortmund in the days at Liverpool. Amarin should apply his philosophy and principles to the 4-3-3, which fits our squad so well. It does, Charlie. It, it really could do. Um, but, and it, it's more... I'm going to get into this on the deep dive later, but it's the defensive setup from his 3-4-3 that I'm really interested in. Uh, I love the build-up stuff from his, his what to his turn into, really. Um, yeah, let's just let's say it's a build-up in a 3-4-3, but it changes quite significantly to how we build up um, when we move into three at the back and the box midfield and stuff because there's a big focus on width from both sides. And again, I'll get into this on the Tactics Show on Redman Plus later on today. Uh, look forward to that one. Uh, next news story, you'll be gutted to find out. It doesn't matter who's going to be the referee, really, because you'll be gutted regardless. But the referee and VAR have been appointed for Manchester United. Anthony Taylor, will, it, it, who is supposedly the best of a bad bunch, um, he will be at Old Trafford on Sunday. He's from Greater Manchester. That's interesting. Apparently he's an Old Singham fan, but he's from Greater Manchester. Only, only won one game of the four, excuse me. Uh, that he is uh, refereed this season. It was the New Year's Day drubbing uh, of Newcastle United. Uh, we drew with Chelsea on the opening day of the season. We drew with Brighton to all, and he took charge for the 3-1 defeat at Arsenal. Uh, for anyone interested, the assistant referees will be no Marks Gary Beswick and no Marks Adam Dunn, while the VAR will be John Brooks, assisted by Richard West. Nobody cared. Um it really doesn't matter, does it, who's in charge. You expect the VAR to make a massive mistake. You expect the referee to be absolutely wham. Uh, the referee, David Coote, at the weekend, was that was an all-time bad referee in performance, I think. The first 35 minutes was, was up there with anything I've ever seen before, to be honest with you. Absolutely useless. Useless he is. Um, so there we go. Move on to the next story. Another transfer update. Sorry, everybody. Um, Liverpool joined Premier League rivals in 47 million pound transfer battle to sign the new Gabriel Jesus Wolf would have been a much more interesting than I left the word new out there and just we're interested in signing Gabby Jesus no thank you um, Palmeiras wonder kid Louis Guilherme is attracting lots of attention and could follow Endrick's footsteps by leaving the Brazilian club for a major European side Endrick of course will be going to Real Madrid Liverpool are among the clubs interested in signing Palmeiras wonder kid Louis Guilherme 18 year old attacker midfielder has been turning heads in Brazil uh, and his progress is not going to notice among scouts working for European sides. Wilhelm has established himself in the Palmeiras team making 33 first team appearances across Brazilian Serie A and the Copa Libertadores. Um, interesting, again I go back to my previous point, not sure Liverpool are going to be signing an attacker midfielder without a manager. Um, obviously we've got Kurt Jones, we've got Alexi McAllister we've got Dominic Soberslay um, we've got Harvey Elliott uh, to name but a few Um we obviously, we we could end up playing a two-man midfield. We could do. 
And if that's the case, we've got tons and tons and tons of midfielders already. Um, so it'll be interesting. But, you know, uh, apparently uh, Bayern Munich and Chelsea are weighing up bids for this guy, uh, Guilherm, Guilherm, sorry. Um, who knows? Who knows? Um, OK, we've got more questions about the manager, uh, because that's what everybody wants to talk about. Mark, could Unai Emery be a suitable choice for Liverpool? If Steven Gerrard achieved Emery's current success at Villa, would Liverpool fans easily advocate to Gerrard to succeed Klopp? I will answer your second question first, if that's OK. Yes, they absolutely, we absolutely would, I believe. Um, and to answer your first question, second, um, I think he would be a suitable choice. Um I think he's a really, really good manager. I don't feel like he's going to be in the running for it. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why. I've not really thought why. I, I don't know what it is. I, I, maybe it's the fact that he didn't quite succeed at Arsenal. Um, although I don't think he was put in a position to succeed at the time. I don't really think he was that bad either. Um, I think having, you know, given more time, he could be. He's got European experience. He's got Premier League experience. He's won loads of Europa Leagues. Um, is it four now uh, that he's won there? Three for Sevilla, one for Sevilla Real maybe. Um, we know he can set up a side. We know his team can go the distance and play well in Europe, and that's with an unheralded Aston Villa side that probably are punching above their weight, which would suggest that the Aston Villa manager is having an impact on the team, which would suggest that he's a good manager. Why wouldn't he be in? Why wouldn't he be in the Ricks? I don't know. Is the honest answer. And I haven't really got any thoughts on it. Uh, Dan, I'm in his 39. I'm 43. I now feel old as shit. Dan, I'm 41, mate, and I'm with you. I wasn't really ready for Liverpool's manager to be younger than me. That's a con, as far as I'm concerned. He's got loads of pros, he's hammering, but it's a massive con that I, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get away with. Um, <laughs> Amarin, oh God, Rachel, sorry. Um, Amarin uh, would be a little older than the senior guys in the team. He would be, and it's mad, but he did retire at 32 years old. Um so yeah, Mikey, oh God, I keep clicking the wrong button. Sorry, everybody. Anyone after a legendary manager like Wenger knows they won't succeed because the fan would expect success straight away. It's true, but they were quite happy with not success at Arsenal. Um, <laughs> oh, if you count F FA Cups every year, I suppose that's right. Um, Proper LFC says, if Michael Edwards appoints a piece of wood as our manager, I'll back the wood. That's how much I trust Edwards and his recruitment. Oh, probably more than me, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I'll take the sentiment. It's an important point. Uh, well made, for sure. Uh, Glenn Boylan, Jota to be back for the United game. I've not heard anything about this. I know Trent Alexander-Arnold and Kurt Jones were, were likely to be there or thereabouts. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Dally Pool says, right, Chris, any one-handed cartwheels lately? No, funnily enough, no one-handed cartwheels lately. If anyone's seen the video, I'm sure I'll put a smile on your face, in which case it's fine by me. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think we're about done there, to be honest with you. Before we go, actually, one more thing, just to reiterate at the start of the show. If you get over to redmenplus.com, use the code RACE, R-A-C-E, you get 50% off a Captain yearly subscription giving you a full year of Redmen plus goodness for just 34.99 type the code in race r-a-c-e enjoy 35 pounds off reduce it from 69.99 to 34.99 um next deep dive dan is asking is around about 340 ish today we're doing a double header on amarin we're doing everything you need to know about ruben amarin that'll be youtube we're doing a tactical fit of uh, ruben amarin a tactical breakdown of his tactics i should say uh, over on Redmen plus today use the code get to watch both shows we do two deep dives every single week a double amarim header today uh, thank you very much for watching everybody and i'll see you on the next one which will be around 3 40 today thank you so very very much for checking out the video if you enjoyed it drop a like uh, the season is now well underway if you need extra red men content be it podcast videos documentaries interviews and general shows fill your boots on redmenplus.com today.